Russian attacks are intensifying before our eyes, and there are fears right now that, of course, that capital city of Kyiv is next. We've got new satellite images to share with you right now of burning homes, artillery firing just to the north of Kyiv as those Russian troops inch closer and closer. And the relentless airstrikes, they have not stopped either. We've just learned from Ukrainian officials that Russian shelling destroyed a cancer hospital with hundreds of patients inside. The hospital's head doctor says right now they believe no one was killed. Let's hope that's true. Also tonight, new reports that Russian troops abducted a mayor in broad daylight. We've got surveillance video that you're watching right now showing Russian soldiers walking at the top of your screen, a man out of an administrative building. Ukrainian officials say that man is Ivan Fedorov, the mayor of Melitopol. Just four days ago, Ukraine's president gave Fedorov an award called the Order of Courage for helping organize humanitarian efforts in his city. And now he is in the hands of the Russians. Leland, it does seem like Russia, slow as it may have been, is starting to gain some momentum in this fight. Yeah, they certainly are, and they're certainly being able to consolidate their power. You talked about Melitopol, where the mayor was kidnapped. That's down here, where the Russians really own uh, this whole area. We learned from the Pentagon uh, today, and we can see on satellite images, that the Russians are really starting to move in on Kyiv. Remember how we talked about the stalled column that was 40 miles long. That's up in this area. That was one of the uh, uh, advance lines. There was the other star stalled column that had come down from the west. They're still blocked here by this Ukrainian force. But this other column that came in from Russia, the reinforcements in the past week or so, those have been starting to make some real progress towards Kyiv and against the Ukrainian defenses. We have some new video ground fighting that is said to be coming from near Kyiv. This actually came from the Russian military a lot of times. So you have to sort of take some of this video with a grain of salt. But it's worth seeing just how the Russians are moving and that now they are starting to put out this video to show they are getting close into Kyiv. We're going to now switch to the satellite images to show you just around the city of Kyiv what exactly uh, is happening. You can see these are the tanks up on the hills looking down on Kyiv that they are firing right now. What are they aiming at? Literally anything in Kyiv. And we know this is the Russian playbook is to simply just bomb Kyiv and shell it into submission. And we can see houses that are on fire hit by those tanks. Again, satellite images. So you just see the randomness of where the Russians are dropping shells. They have absolutely no care in the world about what they hit, so long as it's something. We'll go back to the maps and show you where they are fi firing from. Uh, this is the big map, but it's going to be right about here uh, where the Russians are firing from, just to the northeast of Kyiv that they've now taken, and they've taken a bunch of land right there uh, as well. Now we'll shift down to the south, where this new battle is going on. We talked earlier, here we go. The Russians now are moving out. Metropol, Meliotol is where they kidnapped the mayor. Mariupol is where we saw a lot of fighting. They are continuing to hold out, but we've lost contact with them as the Russians try to push and create the land bridge over here. After that, you're going to see the Russians move north here. There's a huge Ukrainian defensive position here. Russians move this way, and they will crush and then slaughter this Ukrainian defensive position uh, as well. Pushing east and west of Mariupol, that is totally cut off. The Russians own all this and are trying to crush that population against the sea. We've shown you a lot of the video out of Mariupol. This is the day after the hospital was hit the pregnancy hospital, uh, and the emergency services there say maternity homes, hospitals, civilian housing, schools, and kindergartens have all been hit. It has been catastrophic in Mariupol, and now there is at least some reports that the city is cut off. This is the most probably interesting part of what we're seeing in terms of how the Russians are now prosecuting the war. We've all talked about the base in Poland where the NATO supplies are flying into. From there, they come into Lviv and then are taken out on these supply lines out to Kyiv, out to Kyiv, which is obviously an awful long way. They've got to cross the river and then down here towards Odessa. We're talking about the Stinger missiles. We're also talking about the Javelin anti-tank missiles. The key here is the Dnieper River. Got to get across the east. The Russians are obviously trying to move down and cut those. In just the past day or so, we've seen additional Russian airstrikes here, near Lviv, here, near Lutysk, 
and then also here just over those supply lines that they keep trying to pound. It tells you a couple of different things. One, the Russians now understand where the supply lines are. Two, they believe they have more air superiority, meaning they're willing to fly farther into Ukraine. And three, they realize just how much damage the NATO weapons coming in are doing to their troops and to their columns, hence why they're willing to risk the aircraft. Kharkiv is this city that is still holding out in the east. It's been an absolute incredible battle, and you can see how the Russians are trying to encircle it. We'll go into the closer map in Kharkiv. Take a look here. The Russians had thought they were going to take the city. They've kind of given up now, and they're trying to outflank the Ukrainian troops here and then be able to push and encircle the city. We talked earlier about the big Russian column that was able to make it all the way to Kyiv. They came out of here mostly. Some video from Kharkiv. They're shelling hospitals there as well and trying to beat this city into submission. It is the second largest city, Marnie, uh, in Ukraine. And unfortunately, uh, you think about now we are 16, 15, 16 days into this. The Russians have made a lot of strides versus, say, even a week ago. But probably right now, to put it in military terms, in terms of where they are on the battle map, is where they had probably hoped to be two weeks ago, which would have been about 48 hours into the war. But still, two weeks later, uh, not deterred. All right, Leland, um, great representation there of where we're at in this battle. I want to bring in retired Lieutenant General Richard Newton now. Um, based on what we're seeing that Leland just laid out, I want to start with the imminent battle for Kyiv. And I feel like night after night, we're like, oh, the Russian forces are getting closer. They're getting closer. How soon do you think that this particular battle, the siege of this capital, takes place? Well, good evening, Marnie and, and Leland. Uh, by the way, that's a great recap. Leland uh, on the board. Uh, there is, you can get a sense that there's a, there has been to date a north-south fight going on, as Leland pointed out. Uh, but really the center of gravity, the center of effort of the fight is Kyiv. And uh, there, that 40 mile convoy, as well as the other convoy that's coming in from the northeast that Leland pointed out is, it appears that they are getting closer to Kyiv. Uh, and then the, the plan, obviously, is to encircle Kyiv and uh, presumably attack. But I don't know if it'll be just an attack within the next uh, couple of days or so. I think you're going to see extensive mortar fire, long-range artillery, maybe some airstrikes as well to not only soften up Kyiv, but also just to blunt and to try to take the will away from the citizens of Kyiv and, and try to have them capitulate at that point. Right. I mean, they're trying to shell them into submission all across the country. Um, when you see what happened in Mariupol, these hospitals, these schools. The fact, though, um, Lieutenant General, that the Russian forces have stalled, I mean, doesn't it give the Ukrainians more time to get ready around Kyiv, right? They're, um, they're, they're more prepared. It's their city. They're able to, to, to get ready for what's to come. Time is, time is on their side. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, and, you know, uh, Leland had, I believe, my friend Jerry Boykin on earlier tonight where he said moral courage matters. And boy, does that ring true, certainly with the Ukrainian people that we've been talking about night after night, Marnie. Uh, so that is significant. Secondly, the Ukrainian military is putting up a tough fight, and it is on their home turf. And they are getting some support from the West and NATO, especially with more Stinger and Javelin and so forth uh, and other capabilities. Uh, Leland pointed out that they're Russian aircraft and are trying to go after some of those supply lines, but that's a big piece of territory to have to try to secure and to cut off those supplies. Yeah. But I think the next seven, 10 days will be telling. And then uh, Kyiv is going to be encircled. It's one thing, but it's another thing totally different to go in there and go block by lock, block and try to uh, attack and take over the city. Wow. Uh, Putin is recruiting volunteers we've seen today from Syria to help join in this fight. Is this another sign that he underestimated the Ukrainian army and civilians? I think he underestimated the, the Ukrainian people, the military, and certainly underestimated President Zelensky and overestimated his capabilities. Uh, his generals who have been advising him, I, my sources tell me that they were thinking it's, it's 48 to 96 hours in terms of how long this attack. Tomorrow is day 17, and they are still bogged down. They're still in their timeline. Uh, and I'm not so convinced that, that there's this big Russian uh, momentum and onslaught forthcoming. I think, uh, again, it's, this is going to be more of a war of attrition, not in a matter of days or weeks, but even perhaps into months. And it's going to come down to will. 
Uh, and I think also the strength of the leadership of, of Ukraine and frankly, the lack of planning resupply capability and, and frankly, the leadership on the ground uh, is lacking there on the Russian side. Yeah, it's been impressive. You know, you have said that the things you used to worry about while you were assigned to the Pentagon pale in comparison to what we're seeing happen right now. How so? Well, uh, again, this is we're in a whole new chapter of warfare here. Uh, the fact that uh, NATO has been challenged with this invasion uh, has shown a couple things. Number one, the strength of the NATO alliance all along, and it's also uh, really has reunified the, the alliance as well. What I would worry about, um, what I would worry about now if i was assigned back to the pentagon was the use of the breakout use of uh, weapons of mass destruction specifically chemical weapons and then perhaps the use of a uh, you know a tactical nuclear weapon take us behind those closed doors right now and and some of the conversations that you think are happening in terms of what the u.s still has up its sleeve to respond to this as putin is not yeah. deterred yeah, I've, I've been in the White House sit room, uh, and it, it can get very tense under those conditions. The, the gentleman at the head of the table, though, makes all those decisions, and he's getting lots of inputs from, as we talked about earlier uh, in an hour, about the all instruments of national power. You've got State Department diplomatic, you've got the financial and economic considerations, sanctions, and then there's a military piece and certainly intelligence. And so he's got to make the decisions that, again, how the United States is going to move forward in all those instruments of power, especially in the light of, of military uh, forces and so forth. But it, it really does get to be, uh, I'll use this term, it gets to be gut-wrenching in terms of making those decisions, but it, it's, it, it's the President of the United States that has to make that call. Wow. Lieutenant General Richard Newton, as always, great to have you on. Appreciate the insight. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.